So, yeah, so, I mean, I'm going to be talking about having a deeper connection with Allah through his name. So, uh, I mean, a broad topic, but I wanted to, you know, start to talk about why does Allah even tell us his names, right? So, I will talk about that for a little bit, and then, inshallah, I'll focus on one of uh, one of his names, inshallah, and I'll keep it a surprise um, for now. But, uh, yani, subhanAllah, I really want us to, to think about this. Like, Allah tells us, you know, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Right? So Allah tells us that He only created jinn and mankind to worship. Now, language is kind of tricky, right? So when we translate it, we say, we say worship. But, you know, when you speak English, what does... What, what do you think of when you think of worship? You think of like ritual acts that you do, right? This is, it's stuff that you do, you're worshiping God. The word itself doesn't really make you feel a connection, right? It's just like, I have to worship God, right? But subhanAllah, you know, Ibn Abbas says like, you know, is like, is to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, a lot of uh, a lot of you know the, the like uh, the scholars they would say like abudiya like this um, you know uh, servitude or slavehood to Allah subhanahu wa taala is like actually the highest level of love, right? And so and subhanallah, Allah when He tells us to worship Him, He doesn't just kind of like leave us. The way that we're taught about Allah subhanahu wa taala is kind of like He is Allah, He created you. You have to worship him, so do all the things that you need to do to worship, right? So you got to pray, you got to fast, you need to do all these things, and inshallah you'll get to Jannah, and if you don't, then mm, there's Jahannam, right? And so, you know, so, you know, this is, you know, but this is how we're taught a lot of times, right? Like, you, this is, this is what you have to do. There's no connection there. But then we're told, but you should love Allah. You're like, how, right? It's like, it's, uh, you know, to love someone, you have to know them. Now, Allah subhanahu wa like himself, he reveals to us, who he is. He tells us who he is. Yani literally every single one of you, not like collectively, individually, Allah wants you, Allah wants you, Allah wants you, Allah wants me, inshallah, to actually know him. And what does it mean when you know someone? Yani subhanAllah, like, you know, the creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu, right? Allah who is the Rabb, right? Like he is the Lord, he is the sustainer. But he's also, as Dr. Rania said, right? It's like he's Rabbi, he's my Rabb. Like all of the prophets, when they call upon Allah in the Quran, it's like the nurturer, the one who sustains, he's Rabbi, right? So it's not like a far relationship, right? It's like my Rabb. And so Allah subhana, you know, Allah tells us in the Quran, husna fad'uhu biha, right? To Allah belong the best names. So idru, I'm gonna use the Arabic because I wanna break it down a little bit, you know, idru Allah by these by these names. Okay, now the names they have meanings. A lot of times, again, we're taught the names of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and it's like a name and it's a definition. And memorize it, listen to the nasheed, Jannah is yours, right? But Allah actually tells us these names, Subhanallah, so that you can know Him. Now, I want us to take just like a step down from the divine, okay? And I want you to think of someone in your life who you love, like really you love so much, like they make your heart smile, okay? So when you think about them. I want to see smiles on faces like you're actually thinking about people, okay? So, because I want you to really feel it, right? You think about someone who you love so much. Now, I want you to just shout out any, like, what you love about them. Just anything. No, no one loves anyone? This is so sad. SubhanAllah. What, what's in their personality? What? Because they're silly? Masha, that's so cute. Okay, great. Anything else? Mm. Extremely kind. Your grandma, tabarakallah, Allah bless her. Any, anything else? That's beautiful. Yes. Generous, mashallah. Anyone else? Graceful. Graceful, beautiful, mashallah. Okay. Unconditional love, mashallah. Caring, yes. All these things. More. No? Funny. Smiley, I don't, I, I don't know if I made that up, but maybe, I don't know. Huh? Reliable. Reliable, okay, mashallah. So everything that you're saying means nothing to me because I don't know who you're talking about, okay? However, however, so, you know, you, you were telling me things and you're thinking about someone, right? So even though I don't know who you mean and I don't know your experience with the reliability of this person or the kindness of this person, when you're saying it, you're thinking of something. You have a memory, right? It's not just stuff that you say, it's not like a definition, like if I asked you, what do you mean kindness? You're going to say, you're not going to tell me kindness means, you're not going to say that, right? You're going to say, my grandma, you know, like, she's the one, you know, if I was crying as a child, like, she's the one who would take me in, right? That's what you would say. 
So every attribute, every name, right, it, it has a memory for you. You have this experience with it, right? So Allah's far above any analogy. So when Allah is telling us about himself, he's actually giving you more ways to know him, right, than even you know the person who you love the most. Because I don't know if you were shy, but like you kind of struggled to tell me stuff, okay? You were just like, man, nice, smiley, maybe, you know, some stuff like that. But you know, I, I've thought this a lot. People who I love, like, love to death, and I've known my whole life, and I'm like, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to, like, write stuff about them. I get to, like, 10, 15, 20 things. I'm like, I stopped. Like, you know, I'm just like, I'm like, okay, yani, how much more can I write? Allah has given us the opportunity to know him. Like, he tells us, at minimum, right, Allah subhanahu has, you know, uh, more than 99 names because we know from the dua of the Prophet sallallahu you know, so he says that he, uh, that he is asking Allah by all of his names, those, his, those that he's revealed and those that he hasn't, right? So Allah has names, right, that we even we don't know. But that also means that when Allah has revealed names, he's telling you this is a path to him. Right? Like, this is a way that you can get close to him. That's why in every person's life, you are going to connect to Allah differently. But you have to know him. Right? I, I always tell the story. So if you've heard it before, please forgive me. But, you know, my, my younger brother, once he got into an accident, it was really late at night. And, uh, and the first person he called was me. Okay? I did not answer the phone, I'm ashamed to say. But it was late at night. Uh, I sleep early. Um, and then the second person he called was our mom. My mom did not answer either. And then the third person he called was my older brother. And he answered the phone. Now, he called us based on how close he felt to us and based on our attributes. He was like, if I call Janan, she's going to get up and she's going to come and get me. And she's, you know, she's not going to get mad at me. She's, Stuff that he knows about me, right? And he's like, ah, oh, she didn't answer. My mom is going to be super worried, but okay, she's going to come and she's going to help me. My brother's going to be mad, my older brother, but fine, he's going to come and get me, right? So you go to people based on your relationship with them, how close you are, but also what you know about them, right? And when a person, so that's like experientially. But also, some, but also the other thing is, when somebody chooses to tell you something about themselves, it's because it's relevant, right? So I'm sitting here right now, and, you know, the bio that, that was read, it's stuff that is, like, relevant, right? It's not going to be random stuff about me, like, oh, Janan likes to cook. It's like, okay, who cares? So like, this is not relevant for this right now, right? And subhanAllah, so again, Allah is far above any analogy. When Allah is telling us about himself, that means every single name is relevant, right? Allah wants you to know him, right? There, there are names that maybe, I don't know, they don't, they don't manifest in this worldly dimension. Allah, I don't know, Allahu A'lam, there are names that Allah has not revealed. But that means the names that he has revealed, Allah wants you to know him through those names. And sometimes when you're confused, because we're human beings, and then we project human qualities onto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah teaches us, Laysa ka mithlihi shay. You know, subhanAllah, I love this ayah because Allah says, Laysa ka mithlihi shay, there is nothing like him, and he is the all, see, all, all hearing and all seeing. And they're like, okay, but humans see, right? And, and, and humans hear and humans see, right? But Allah is trying to tell you this thing that you think you have in common with Allah, you think because you see and you hear, right? Allah is telling you, no, 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 nothing, nothing is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we know, like, we, this language, so you have an approx approximation. When Allah tells us he's merciful, right, he's the most merciful, we understand that because we kind of have this approximation. Okay, I felt kindness from this person, I felt mercy from this person, right? But Allah is telling us, don't limit yourself to that. Right, like that, okay, I want you to understand it in that way. So we have these examples when the Prophet Sallallahu he says, you know, do you see this woman? And this woman had lost her child, like after a battle, then she, then she finds a child and she nurses the child. This is something we can all visualize. So he's like, do, do you see that? Like to the companions, they're like, yeah. And, you know, Allah is more merciful toward you than like that what you just saw in front of you, that mom picking up that child, right? And so, uh, so we can use kind of human examples to get close to the meaning a little bit, but like, no, 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 that's Allah subhanahu is like far above. So exactly what 
you know, what the Torani was saying about like, you know, yeah, people, they might, you know, you know, when you keep doing something that's like, that's messed up, you know, uh, and sometimes it's always like other people doing stuff, stuff to us, but sometimes we're the ones who are doing messed up things, right? And so, you know, sometimes a person can forgive you once and twice and three times, right? Um, but afterwards, they give up on you. They're like, yeah, like how many times they're going to say sorry? Like you, you're never going to change, right? But again, not Allah. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's telling that he's al-ghafoor, he's al-ghafar, like he's telling you quantity and quality. You might have things that you've done that like you're ashamed to say out loud. You're like, if people knew this about me, yani, khalas, like, I don't know, no, no one's going to, like, that's it. I'm going to be like excommunicated from the community. Like, I'm ashamed. I can't even say what I did. Allah will forgive that. Like, this is how, this is who, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he's telling us this about himself, because he wants you to always have hope. As long as you're going back to Allah, then inshallah you're good, right? Inshallah you're good. And so that's why it's so important to know the names of Allah, but not just to be like, this is a, this is a name, okay, Rahman, and it means, you know, the one who has the you know, most encompassing mercy, for example. But no, no, break it down. What does that actually mean? What does Rahmah mean? How does Allah tell us about Rahmah in the Quran? How does the Prophet ﷺ tell us about Rahmah? How do we break it down? What does it mean in my life for me to see this Rahmah? And that's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah al-Asma al-Husna fad'uhu biha, you know, ad'u Allah by his names. The, you know, Ibn al-Qayyim, he says, you know, there's, there's two types of du'a. So we translate it as call upon him with them, uh, with yeah, with the names, and so that is du'a al-talab wal masala, right? So that is the du'a of, you know, asking and requesting from Allah, right? So you know, ishfi anta shafi, right? Like Allah heal because you're the healer, right? But then there is du'a al-ibada, the du'a of worship. Now, what does that mean? And so it actually means that you act accordingly. So, you know, Sadh Hsai, she was talking about like, you know, uh, beautifying your own character. But, and that is a very important part. And it's actually, subhanAllah, it's even more than that. Because it means I now, knowing, you know, just how my brother called me because he knew kind of like, okay, Janan, well, he thought I would answer the phone, I didn't, but, you know, we'll not talk about that, right? But, subhanAllah, but you, this entails something for your behavior. So if we take Allah's name, for example, of razzaq when you know that he is the provider, and provision is anything that benefits you, right? So yes, that can mean wealth, it can mean food, but it's like the provision of the heart, it's the provision of the soul, right? It's all of these different types of provisions. And when you know that, so yes, what you do, you call upon Allah, like, Ya Razzaq, Ya Allah, please, you know, Ya Razzaq, like, you know, give me these, like, this is the provision of the heart, give me the provision of the soul, right? But it also means that, like, I go and seek it out, even when everybody's telling me that, like, you can never get it. Right? And so that can be wealth wise. The economy is really bad. You're never going to get a job. And you could be like, yeah, but no, no, Allah is a razaq. So I will. Um, you know, you're too old. You want to memorize the Quran. Like people memorize the Quran, they're like 10 years old. You're like, what, you're 45. Like, are you, you're going to be able to? This risk is from Allah. You just, you go out. You're like, it's not in my hands. I have a bad memory. I can't do this. But you know what? Allah is a razaq. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to seek the provision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that also means I can't do it unethically because if I believe that the risk is from God, the risk is, the risk is not from people, so I can't really go into a haram job, right? I, you know, like it's just like that, that's really contradictory that I can't do something that is haram and then be like Allah razaq, right? And then, and so, and also then you embody it just like you love that Allah provides for you then you provide for other people, provide for them, you know, subhanAllah, like the provision of the heart, the, you know, the provision of the soul, right? If somebody, you know, is lonely in the community, right, then go and be their friend, you know, subhanAllah, just like you love Allah to provide for you, then go and provide for others. And so this dua al-ibadah, right, this worship of Allah, it's so much more. Right? It's actually, I live my life knowing who Allah is. Just like, you know, you know, if you know somebody has your back, you know, like, um, you know, we have an expression in Arabic. So, um, when somebody, like, let's say they behave in, like, a cocky way, for example, and they say, like, what, this is Shara Abuq, like, you think this is your father's street, your father's road, right? So, you know, because they're behaving in this way, right? Because, you know, they might think that their dad owns the road. I don't know, right? But subhanAllah, but you behave in a certain way based on, you know, what you think you have. 
So if you have Allah, you have Al-Razaq, you have Al-Rahman, right? You have Al-Wahhab, Allah constantly giving you gifts, right? And so Allah subhanahu really, like, you live your life and you start to recognize, you know, and you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Wahhab. There is, you know, I also tell this other funny story because whenever I think about it, I'm like, I'm like, Allah is so generous and like, and I'm so stupid and like, Allah just gives me things, subhanAllah. So I remember once I was, uh, um, I don't know, I woke up and I, I was just like not in the best mood. And for some reason, I was really craving a croissant. And I was like, I want a croissant. And, uh, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go somewhere nice and I'm going to go order a nice croissant. And I went there very pleased with myself and I ordered a coffee and ordered a croissant. And then I got a phone call. So I got up and I walked um, and I walked to, to take the call. When I came back, there wasn't one croissant on my table. There were two. The waiter got me two croissants. I was like, Allah, Allah gave me two croissants. I was so happy. Right? So I was like, I was like, oh, and I felt so good. I was like, I was like, oh, Allah said, Wahab, like, look at this. You know, Allah's giving me these croissants. Right? And then, you know, and then, and then, so, and then, halas, I want to pay. And then the waiter, he comes and he gives me like this, the, the bill, and it's only for the coffee. And I'm like, no, no, excuse me, you didn't put the croissant. He's like, no, no, don't worry, it's, it's on us. And I'm like, Allah gave me this croissant. Like, I was like, just, I was like, just, just in case. I was like, it's a coincidence. Like, okay, he made a mistake. He gave you two croissants, and it's not like a mom and pop's place. Like, it was like some you know, establishment that I don't know what. But like, alhamdulillah. And then you start to see, oh, Allah, Allah, we'll have even these tiny gifts. Because sometimes we think a gift has got to be something big, right? Like this miracle happened. You know, Allah split the sea for Musa. So what's Allah gonna split for me? No, like it can be that Allah gave you a croissant. You know, like. Subhanallah, like it's this, but you when you understand Allah, you live your life, right? Like you see subhanah, like how Allah really like, you know, I it, Allah is with us in every moment, like really, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like right now, like guys, just think about it, like inshallah, every single person here, even if you just came here because somebody forced you to come here, or you know, and you just came here because someone told you there's going to be burgers outside, right? but Allah forgives you, like how, like, th like Allah wanted you to be here, like subhanallah, so that you can be forgiven, so like Allah, like Allah al-Ghafoor is like inshallah, like forgiving all of us, you should, we should walk out of here feeling lighter, like alhamdulillah, like you know, there's just like some sh sins that were shed, I didn't even know we're there, but alhamdulillah, Allah got rid of them for me. I didn't even ask. Everything in Islam is based on intention, right? So you should have intended to come here to benefit, but maybe you didn't. You're just like, oh, I don't want to come here. I want to do something else. It's Friday night, you know? But Allah chose for you to be here so that he can forgive you. Yani, subhanallah, right? So when you live your life, it's just like every every moment is with Allah. Every moment is with Al-Rahman Al-Rahim. Every moment is with Al-Kareem. Like how generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, right? I don't know how much time I have. Okay, uh, when's, ma when's Maghrib? Okay, inshallah, we'll do this in 23 minutes, inshallah. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so I, like, I'm just, I'm saying that because, like, really, it's so beautiful that we have, like, Allah, we have a Lord, we have God, who, like, wants literally every single one of us to actually to know Him and to have this personal relationship with Him, right? This is not, like, New Age Islam. I'm not sitting here inventing stuff and be like, oh, the universe wants you, you know, to do whatever. No, this is, Allah is telling us who He is. Right, Allah, like I'm not, this is not, like this is based on the names that we find in the Quran, the names that we find in the Sunnah, like this is who Allah is, that Allah has chosen to reveal. So every single person here, every single one of us, like we have this capacity, right, the capacity to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, and sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll be put through something just so you can know Allah subhanahu in like a different way. You know, sometimes you go through a situation and you're just like, wow, I didn't know that this girl, like my friend, whatever she had my back, I didn't know she would step in like that, right? And so even though like you, it was a testing situation, but you're like, wow, I really got to know X, you know, my friend. You know, that these things happen to in our lives as well because then we get to know Allah. Right? Maybe, maybe you do get sick, right? Maybe some maybe you do lose your job, right? Maybe subhanAllah something happens, but then guess what? You actually get to know Allah subhanAllah in a way that you never would have. You never subhanAllah would have if not for whatever happened to you in your life. And so the name that I wanted to kind of to cover today, and the reason why I, I wanted to talk about the same today today. As Allah's name al wasa right? So like Allah is like the vast and the, the all-encompassing. And the reason is, you know, subhanAllah, like the book now, it's been published like I don't know, four years ago. Um, but since then, it's like there's been so many more reflections. And this has to do with the wasa of Allah, 
right? So inshallah, I'll, I'll go into it, but I really hope we can connect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like with this name. So we talk about like wusa, right? It's just like the root, right? It's like it means like ability and expansion. It's the opposite of constriction, right? When something is wasa, it's like it's vast, right? Like I remember my my nephew, I had taken, like we have a garden in our house, but it's a house garden and it's not huge. So once I took him to a park and he was like, he was like five at the time and he was like, oh my God, thank you. Thank you. And he's just like running. And I was just like, subhanAllah, he's never seen like this big open space before, you know? So, you know, you, you're just like, you're like, oh, you can breathe. Like it's the opposite of constriction, right? So this is what wasa means. It's like, it's fast, right? And it's usually like linguistically, we use it to, you know, when you talk about something that has an like encompassing nature, inclusive nature, something being really vast or really deep. And so you can talk about it to describe like places. Like you can say like, you know, al hadiqa wasi'a, like this garden is really like vast, right? But even like action, so like ability and giving that you give from your sa'a, right? So Allah has expanded for you, right? So you give from that expanse that Allah has given to you. And so Allah is telling us that he is al wasi'. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is vast and all-encompassing and so anything that is vast or expansive in this world it still has limits right and anything anything everything has limits right and but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one right that does not have limits and you know subhanAllah I think I think it's Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal when he says you know every time you think that you've you imagined God in a sense like how Allah is no it's not that because like you can't like you cannot encompass Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and so you know Allah tells us so Allah tells us and to Allah belongs the east and the west so you wherever you might turn there is the face of Allah there is Allah right and because Allah is wasa and Allah is all-knowing and so Allah can't be contained in space Right? It's not like it's a logical thing, like if God is here, he can't be here. No, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. And so when Allah tells us that he's wasa, so where, what does this apply to? What does it actually mean? So firstly, it means that Allah is wasa in his essence, like that Allah, like in Allah's essence. And that means that we don't limit Allah subhanahu with like our minds and our conceptualizations. And how do we do this, right? Because you can't reach the, that, the essence of Allah, right? But we limit him when we give him human attributes. You know, Dr. Rani was talking about like these emotional blocks that we have. And sometimes it's because we're kind of, we're projecting onto Allah, like our relationship with people, sometimes our relationship with family members, with parents, for example. You know, I had a rough, you know, relationship with my father. You know, literally somebody was telling me, you know, I always, you know, the reason why I feel like I can't go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I realize this, you know, talking about it and going to therapy, she said, you know, I felt like my dad, he was always there for everybody else, but not me. So I could talk to people about the mercy of God, but I just felt like it didn't apply to me. And then I realized, I was like, oh my goodness, like I'm making Allah my dad and Allah's not your dad, right? So, but subhanAllah, but we do that. So sometimes we have to think, am I limiting Allah? Am I saying, I get it, but not for me? It's impossible that like Allah would give me this. Or why would Allah do that? Because I don't understand the wisdom, therefore there is no wisdom. Those are all ways that we actually were limiting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is saying he's wasa and you're making him like this, but Allah's wasa, right? And so we have to we have to check ourselves. When we start to limit Allah, we start to have these negative thoughts about Allah. And we say, Well, why would this happen? Right? Because again, we're saying, Well, I can't see the wisdom, therefore khalas, there's no wisdom. Right? I have a difficult relationship with like a caregiver or something. And so I'm, you know, it happens to us, subhanAllah, psychologically, but then I project that onto Allah. Right? And so we have to take a step back, be like, no, no, but Allah is not, you know, the caregiver who had difficulty, you know, giving me care. Like Allah's far above, right? And so we have to always think of that when we think that Allah subhanahu is al wasa. Like, don't always check yourself. Am I projecting onto Allah, right? Something that is a human attribute, a human limitation, right? And I'm, and I'm kind of acting the way I behave. You might not verbalize it. You're not saying, I see God as my father. Like nobody does that, right? But you're acting in that way, right? So always like, if you find you're like, what is preventing me from going to Allah? I think that my sins are too big. Okay, but Allah's not a human. Maybe for people, your sins are too big. Okay, yeah, it was messed up what you did, fine. But you can still go to Allah. No, no, I can't, 
I, I can't ask Allah for like these silly, like small things, right? Because, you know, Allah is al Malik, Allah, you know, one of his names, he's the sovereign, he's the king. But then the way we think of it, we again, we make an approx approximation to a human king. So what happens to the human king? Like when I go to the human king, I need to only ask for the big things. You're not going to ask for the small things. You're going to be like, king, give me a mansion, right? But you're not going to be like, king, I also want shoes, right? Like you're just, you're not going to say that, right? I leave the big du'as to the king, everything else I can do myself. Mm, no, guess what? You just project it, right? Onto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like yeah, we ask Allah because Allah is al-mujib and also Allah is al-ghani. Allah has no needs, but that also means I have needs, right? I have limits. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Allah is also wasi'. When we say Allah is wasi', Allah is wasi' in his names. And that means, you know, sometimes, you know, um, a lot, a lot of people, like after the publishing of the book, they're just like, like, halas, like, you know the names of Allah. It's like, no, the name, no. Do you think I know the names of Allah? I'm just like, subhanAllah, this is, this is just scratching the surface, right? I'm like, every talk there is, every new book that comes out, I'm just like, give me, yalla, bismillah, right? But it's not just that, it's not just the theoretical part of it, right? It's like actually, subhanAllah, like experiencing and just like seeing, like, subhanAllah, I didn't even think of it in this way. Right, and so, so with the names of Allah, like we have to, we have to know that it's not just about the surface level understanding of Allah's names, right? That Allah is actually telling us; He's telling us who He is, right? And if you, if we, if we, when we, the closer we get to a person, the more we know them, we realize. Oh, but I still, there are still certain things that you don't know. Again, Allah is far above, right? And so, yani, imagine, it doesn't, it doesn't stop. It's not just like, I've memorized the names, I know the definition. If you, you know, ask me, you know, if you examine me on them, khalas, you know, inshallah, I'll get an A+. Plus. No, Allah, subhanahu like, they're so, 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 so deep, right? And you really, and really, like, you, the more you think about them, the more you reflect on them, yani, it's, it's like this amazing ocean. Like, you know, we read like Surah Al-Kahf like every week, right? And I swear to you, like every single, even just today, I was like, oh my goodness, I never thought of this, right? So like the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? That you just, you see how it applies, subhanAllah, in this dunya. And uh, and so and so those are like, so Allah is wasa in his essence, Allah is wasa in his names. Allah is also wasa in his creation. You know, subhanAllah, when you, when you see these, like, documentaries about, like, these far out places in the world, and they show you, like, these creatures that you didn't even know existed, right? Yeah, and there's, you know, we, we, we've gotten to a level where people think, like, like, we know everything there is to know, right? Almost. And then suddenly they're just like, we just discovered this new plant species somewhere, right? And so Allah, subhanAllah, is like, wasa, like, go out into the world and just see the vastness of Allah's creation. Right? There are certain things in ourselves that we are still discovering. And the moment you say, Khalas, we know everything, right? Like now you're putting a limit. But Allah is wasa in His creation. Right? Allah is al khalaq Allah continues, subhanAllah, to create. And the other way that, you know, uh, the sa'a is used in Allah being wasa is in Allah's giving. And this is really important. So, Allah subhanahu so the uh, one of the companions of Abu Ubaid al Jarrah, he said, like, when we say Allah is wasa, it means that He is the most liberal in His giving, that Allah just gives, right? So His generosity embraces, you know, everybody who asks of Him. But part of His, his sa, is, you know, Allah being wasa, is, you know, when we ask Allah subhanahu, you know, we want that specific thing. We have faith that Allah, you know, Allah is al-mujib, Allah is going to respond, Allah is al-wasa. You know, Sheikh Akram Nadwi, he used to always say, you know, if you came to me, he's in the UK, so like if you came to me and he asked me for one penny, right, like one cent, right, like how hard would it be for me to give it to you? Like it's nothing, it's almost nothing, right? So he's like when you ask Allah, it's like less than that one cent is to me. When we talk about Allah being wasa, you know, we are the ones who are limited, so when you ask Allah subhanahu, right, like let's just, I mean, think, I mean, imagine if you were a kid and you're thinking, I really want this toy, okay? And then suddenly, and you don't, you can't even imagine the existence of other toys, you just want this toy. But then suddenly somebody opens to you the door of the toy store and you see everything that's there and you're just like, Allahu Akbar. And so you just think, you know, just like, I don't know, like there's so many choices, right? And so Allah subhanahu, like when Allah is wasa, and why do I mention this? Because sometimes we make dua and we're just like, but I believed and I wanted this thing specifically. Allah is so wasa, Allah had things you couldn't even imagine. You thought you wanted this thing and you thought that this thing was the best for you, right? But Allah 
chooses to give you something else you don't even know existed. Like we're so limited. You're just like, this is the answer to my problem. I need this. If I do not get this, then خلاص, my, my world is going to be over. I'm, you know, I'm going to die. I can't, I, خلاص, I can't, right? But Allah actually chooses to give you something else, right? Because Allah is wasa. So Allah is liberal and is giving in the sense of how much Allah gives, right? That Allah is, con like we are here literally like because of the sa'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And but subhanAllah, because Allah is so vast, you don't even know what Allah has, right? So we're so limited in our asking, Ya Rab, I want this job, right? Ya Rab, I want this person to marry, right? It's like, I didn't marry him, khalas, his life, life is over, right? But Allah's like, no, I had another plan for you, right? It's just like this, like you didn't even know this thing existed. So when you think about when you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Remember that Allah is not limited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like he's giving and he's giving and he's giving all the time, right? It's like it's never ending. But also Allah has things you, that never crossed your mind. They never crossed your mind. So when you ask, have trust. Allah will respond because he is Al-Mujim. But he might respond, like I, I'm asking for something because based on kind of my human rationality, this is the best for me right now, okay? But I have trust in Allah, he's wasa. He might give me something that I actually didn't imagine, right? And so... and. You know, subhanAllah, when I knew this this brother uh, in university and, you know, mashallah alayhi, he, he got excellent grades at university. He graduated from this, you know, you know top, uh, um, like, university in the world. And he was applying for jobs. He could not get any job, right? And he was very upset that the fact that he could not get any jobs. He's like, I'm going to keep applying. Allah I'm going to keep applying. And then suddenly out of nowhere, right, somebody offers him a job that was like the perfect thing for him. And he was like, I feel like Allah was teaching me first that like, I should put in the effort, but risk is going to come his way. I don't want to be cocky that like, because I applied for all these things, that's why I got it. He's like, that was the first lesson. He's like, but the second lesson, I didn't even imagine that there was a job that was that perfect for me. Like, subhanAllah. So it's like, Allah's al-razzaq and Allah's al-wasa. Right? So when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we know that he's wasa, we also have to know that Allah subhanahu and when he gives, right, it's from his sa'a, not from our limited mindset. And subhanAllah, if you look at the context in the Qur'an, like Allah talks about him being wasa or his sa'a and these different, with other names, you know, different names or in a specific context. And so, you know, Allah says, you know, uh, uh, many times actually in the Qur'an, Wallahu wasi'un alim. So Allah is vast and he is the all-knowing. So what does that mean? Allah knows everything. He knows what we know, what we don't know, what is, you know, what is obvious, what is hidden, what was, what wasn't, what could be, what, like everything, like forms of knowledge you can't even imagine, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows. And he's wasa in that knowledge. And, you know, and the beautiful thing is when we say Allah's wasa in that knowledge, I remember once I was listening to this podcast interview, I was with this um, doctor, her name... Um, I'll, I'll remember her name, but anyway, she had, you know, she was a doctor, like an MD, and she had, uh, she had MS. And so slowly, you know, her situation was deteriorating, she was getting very sick, you know, she, she could only, you know, she, she, she was feeling a lot of pain, um, and she uh, was on a wheelchair, her condition just kept deteriorating. They were giving her medicine, medicines to, like, manage her situation, but she just kept getting worse. And she was thinking, the only thing I was thinking of is, like, my children. Like, I really wanted to be there for my children, and I couldn't, you know, it was just so hard. And then she thought, you know what? I'm a doctor. Let me look at the medical literature, like, you know, and just see what I can do. And so she starts to read, she's like, okay, MS actually starts in, like, this part of the brain. And so what she does is she starts to take supplements. She's like, you know, like, this actually, this vitamin or this whatever can help with this part of the brain when she starts taking it she goes you know what i actually had some good days some days where i could actually move myself a little bit and then she goes you know what why am i limiting myself to supplements i want to see where the you know let's just say it's like a vitamin where this vitamin is in abundance like but like in nature so like i'll eat apples for example or something like that and tabarakallah, like she actually tells her story and she literally, like you see her, she, her situation was deteriorating. She was like on a wheelchair um, and now she shows herself and she does this thing on Instagram. She always shows what she eats, uh, but she's swimming, she's cycling. And she said something, the reason why I, said, why I tell the story, she goes, 
you know, we think that the apple is good for you because it has, you know, these vitamins, for example. But there are things in the apple and the way that it's composed, right, that we don't know that actually in combination, that's what makes it good for us. So I can I can take the supplements. I'm not telling people not to take supplements, right? She also takes supplements. But the point that she was saying is like, we don't know. We think we know. We think we figured out the apple, right? The apple has fiber and it has this and it has that and whatever. So... I can take these pills and it'll be it'll be just the same or it'll be even better. But she goes, there are things, I'm saying subhanAllah, she, she, she was not saying subhanAllah, inshallah she does one day, but you know, she was, the way she said it, I was like, really Allah is wasa alim. Like when Allah created this apple, we think we figured out the apple, right? Allah subhanahu like in his knowledge, he's so much more encompassing. He's so much more expansive and vast. So sometimes we think we figured things out, right? But Allah tells us he's wasa and alim, right? Like, you know, Subhanallah, we have to like recognize that about the um, the wasa of Allah. Now, Allah Subhanahu also tells us that He is wasa and hakim in the Quran. So, you know, when we talk about knowledge, again, we we're human, so we understand things in a human way. We all know a lot of people who are smart, right? They know a lot, but they're not very wise, right? Like they sometimes do things, and they're just like. You're supposed to be smart, right? You're supposed to know a lot, right? Like we, I'm, I'm sure we're all thinking of someone right now that we know in our lives, right? But you know, Allah Subhanahu. And again, it's not because this the the the, the, the alim excludes this meaning, but because we're human and we, you know, we understand language in certain ways. So Allah is telling that He's wasa, like in His hikmah, in His wisdom. And Allah shows us His wisdom in the Quran through so many stories, right? So. You know, I mean, even in the life and the seed of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are certain things that happen that you're just like, why did this happen? Like when he goes to Ta'if, and then SubhanAllah, they chase him out. Like they could have just said no. Like, you know, no was an option, right? But like they, SubhanAllah, like they, they, hum they wanted to humiliate him, right? They wanted like to disgrace him. Like, they wanted that. Like, how mean. And, you know, he's like, he's a prophet of God. Jibreel could have told him, just skip skip that. Don't go to Ta'if. Just just wait in Mecca. You know, the tribes are going to come. You can talk to. But no, the Prophet Sallallahu went through that. Right? And subhanAllah, we learn through his experience. And so you see the Prophet's life, Salam, it's ups and downs and ups and downs. But now we have the benefit of hindsight. We're like, Allahu Akbar. Okay, now we know why this happened. We know why that happened. The story of Yusuf, salam, you know, when people say like, why do bad things happen to good people? Like, this is the story of Yusuf, salam. like, you know, Yusuf, he's a child. He has this dream. And then his brothers try to kill him. And you're just like, what? Like, what is this? Right? And then he thinks he saved... This caravan comes, you're like, Allahu Akbar, gonna go back to my family. No, we're gonna sell you as a slave. Right? And it's like, okay, the, the master person is nice to him. He grows up, guess what? The wife is just like, okay, this we're gonna she wants to do haram, right? He's like, I and then he's put in jail. He's like, yeah, he did nothing. You know when someone you're just like every time there's just something that happens to this person, right? But subhanAllah, Allah is dhatif, Allah is subtle, right? So the end of the story. What do we see? We see that, you know, uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, he's made like, you know, he has the authority over the food rations. But all of those little details, these inconvenient things, these things that you're just like, but why? Like, he, he didn't do anything. He was an exemplary person. And so sometimes things like that happen in our lives, right? That we're just like, I did the right thing. And these people are saying this about me. Right? Like, Ya Rab, I wanted to do this for you. Like, I did this charity event for you, but then something happened. It was a disaster. And so we think like, Ya Rab, but like why? Like, Aisha, radiallahu anha, right? Like, talking like this hadith al if the slander of like Aisha, the way of the Prophet Sallallahu right? But Allah says in the Quran, you think you thought it was bad for you, but no, no, no. Like there's a lesson, right? There's actually, there's a lesson in what had happened. And you know, subhanAllah, I think Allah is so wise that Aisha says, radiallahu anha, she was sick for a whole month. She's like, they were talking about me. I didn't even know what was going on. Right? So for her, she's sick and like, you know, she's not feeling well, but Allah saved her. She had no idea what everybody was saying about her except for like the last three days, right? Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reveals that in the Quran. Again, even wisdom in that, right? So Allah is vast in his hikmah. So when I can't understand something, Ya Rab, even though I, I can't, I don't get it, Ya Rab, but I know that you're wasa and you're wasa and you're hikmah. It's not like human wisdom that I can question, right? But Allah is what, so, is limitless in his wisdom. And wallah, you know, if you have yaqeen in that, most of the time, Allah shows you the wisdom. You might see something, it doesn't make sense to you at all, but you force yourself, you're like, Ya Rab, I don't get it, but I trust you. 
خلاص and maybe 10 years later والله العظيم like I've seen this in my own life I'm just like but يا رب like why like I was doing something good like why did this happen like يا رب you know I don't know inshallah you know worse comes to worse inshallah this will testify for me in the day of judgment alhamdulillah right and then 10 years later I'm like Allahu Akbar if that didn't happen this wouldn't have happened oh my god subhanallah I'm so limited you know like I I, I, I don't have this this foresight and this wisdom I'm not I don't have this sa'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah's wasa right and Allah also says what does he say wa rahmati wasi'at kulla shay my rahma wasi'at it's big enough right Allah's rahma is big enough for everything so sometimes we don't have mercy on ourselves we like self-flagellate we punish ourselves I'm not deserving of this I'm not worthy who cares what you think about yourself Allah thinks you're, you're worthy Allah will give you his rahma right and so sometimes you know we act with Allah the way we feel about ourselves right like we for, for whatever reason, you know, like we have difficulty with our own selves and we don't show mercy to ourselves, right? And we project that onto Allah, right? It's just like, I don't deserve it, right? And subhanAllah, none of us deserves it, but Allah gives it anyway, right? And so, and so it's not about that. Allah doesn't, Allah doesn't, you know, just the fact that you are his creation, that Allah created you, that you go back to him and that you affirm his mercy, خلاص, and you are within, you are within the realm of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How, how amazing, how beautiful is that, that you can't even have rahmah towards yourself, but Allah has rahmah towards you. This is like, rahmati, wasi'at, kulla shay, everything, everything. How beautiful from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, don't you just feel so loved right now? That you're just like, oh, alhamdulillah, you know, like, maybe people have been mean to me, but like, not Allah, Allah subhanahu Allah is rahim. And then, in rabbaka wasi'u al-maghfira. Allah is wasi'u and is maghfira. Again, because Allah says he's ghafoor and he's ghaffar. So Allah always, he always forgives and he forgives even the big sins. But sometimes we are still, we're just like, but even mine, like even me, right? No, no, Allah is wasi'u al-maghfira. Just go back to him. Ya Rab, I'm sorry, I messed up. Go back to him. I messed up again. I keep falling to the same thing. Like ah, I'm. I hate myself. I'm. I can't. I can't do this. Allah is wasi'an maghfira. I told the story at um, I think at MCA a few weeks ago. But Subhanallah, this always touched me. Uh, there was a scholar um, in Saudi Arabia, and he he's also a heart surgeon. So he's like Islamic scholar, study the deen, and he's also a heart surgeon. And he's like you know people come to me with their problems so he's like there's this one person i knew who was you know he was an alcoholic and this is i mean i want you to think about this he was an alcoholic in saudi arabia like 30 years ago like it's hard to get alcohol you know like it's not like you can just go to the liquor store down the street there's temptation everywhere no no, no. he had to work hard to get this alcohol right but he was an alcoholic and he'd come to the sheikh and he'd be like yeah sheikh khalas, i did my toba never drinking alcohol again and the sheikh is like, great, I'm so proud of you, mashallah. And then he goes back to it. And then they come back, sheikh, this is, you know, like, I, I've done toba. Great. And then he, like, he just kept going back to it. So I was just like, this guy, khalas, it's a hopeless case. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, okay. Every time he tells me, I'm like, okay, you know. He goes, once he came to me and he says, sheikh, you're going to see this is the toba. You're, this is the last one you're gonna see and he's like I, in my mind I was like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. like he's like I didn't believe him I was like yeah, this is not gonna happen because anyway I was in the hospital I was on call um, it was like I don't know weekend or something and then he goes suddenly one of the nurses like please come to the emergency there's somebody who knows you somebody who knows me who is it like family who is it and he goes and he goes who's that man and he goes he, he got into this big accident and I checked his vitals like khalas he was dying and then he goes as I'm looking at him and I'm trying to talk to him and he goes, Sheikh, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you this is going to be the tawbah? And so Allah subhanahu, he took him in a state of tawbah. And that means not only that Allah accepted him, that means his sayyat turned into hasanat. So Allah is, the, the Sheikh was like, I gave up on him. And look at Rabbil Alameen. Look at when he chose to take him. And so, and he goes, and before he died, he said, he said, Shahad, he said, La ilaha illallah. He goes, I work in these hospitals. He's like, there are people who cannot say La ilaha illallah. He's like, and this man said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, before he died. So he goes, I go to the funeral, and, you know, obviously, like, they're all, you know, mourning their son. And I wanted to make the parents happy. I was like, by the way, I was there, and your, your son, he said the Shahad. And he walks out, and he goes, a cousin of the man comes to me, and he goes, yeah, Sheikh, did you just tell them this to make them happy? Because, like, we, we, we all know what he was. Then he goes, no, but Allah knew more than you what he was. Right? Allah knew more than you. So Allah is wasi' al-maghfira. Like really, for yourself, for other people, 
Don't give up on other people. Don't give up on yourself. If you're going back to Allah, Allah, like Allah encompasses, right? Like this is the thing, Allah encompasses everyone. We have to have yaqeen in that. It doesn't mean that we mess around, we're just like, okay, I'll just do istighfar later. Like, of course not. It's, you know, you don't... Um, you know, you don't take advantage, right? And Allah knows what's in our hearts. But like when you do mess up, go back to Allah sincerely. And so subhanAllah, like we, you know, the way that you feel it, and subhanAllah, the way that you can feel this, like the sa'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, sometimes you can only feel it when you're in constriction. And then suddenly it's like, oh, something opens up. And you're like, Wallah, Allah is al wasa, right? So sometimes maybe you're in that constraint. Maybe you're in like, you're in a tight spot in your life right now. But look forward to the sa'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because then you're really going to feel it. You're like, wow, I was actually in that sa'a before and I didn't realize it until this test came and then it opened up and I'm like, Allah, Allah really is al wasa. The final thing I'm going to say, because I know there's probably like Maghrib, um, but one thing I think is really, really important is that also Allah's religion is vast. This deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is vast. Yani Allah, and yani if you look at, you know, when we look at the, our religion, we're, as Muslims, you know, we're always like, you have to do this and you have to do this. We always talk about the restrictions. I'm not allowed to do this. I can't do this. Mm -hmm. This is when we talk about the deen. But subhanAllah, what you're allowed to do is so much more than what the halal is so much more than the haram, right? Like, we're just like, I, you know, I can't drink alcohol, alhamdulillah, right? But it's like, but what you can drink is like so much more, right? We focus on the things that we can't, but like, actually, Allah's religion is so vast that Allah subhanAllah, you know, He makes also dispensations. Allah does not, you know, bear a soul more than it can bear. This also to do with the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's religion is vast. Like we make it tight and we make it strict, but Allah subhanahu his religion is vast. But that also means that there is room for all of us with our mistakes, with our doubts, with all of these things. There's room for everybody. You know, subhanAllah, the Prophet said there's so many ahadith where he praises, for example, like a businessman, right? With the Prophet said, the woman who cleaned, you know, the, the message and she, she passed away, nobody told him, he didn't pray over her, right? Why I'm saying this is because like sometimes you think you have to be, you have to look a certain way or be a certain way to be like super Muslim, right? But actually, this religion has room for you for whatever talents you have, for however you want to give. Like, yes, there's obviously, there is haram, right? Like, if you imagine it as a circle, what is outside the circle is haram. But there's so much more in the halal. And there's so many roads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe you're you're business savvy. Maybe you're an artist. Maybe, mashallah, like you're a parent, right? Maybe you like to bring people together. You're the person in your household that just brings the family together. That could be your door to Allah. So sometimes we belittle ourselves, they're like, eh, it's not going to be me. Like, mashallah, and people talk about these people who they got these high stations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And we're thinking, Umar al Khattab, and like, look what he did, and Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu. Yes, they are. But you know, there's other people. There's people like Uwais al Qarani, right? The Prophet, I mean, he says, he tells Umar al Khattab and Ali, they're, they are promised paradise. They say, when you meet this man, ask him to make dua for you and to ask forgiveness for you. Who's this guy who's going to ask for forgiveness for Umar al-Khattab and Ali ibn Abi Talib, right? And if you look at, if you were to look at his life from the outside, he was not special. He was in Yemen, he became Muslim, he was taking care of his mom. He could have been a Sahabi, he could have gone and met the Prophet but he's like, I didn't want to make my mom feel like she's a burden and like leave her to my uncle because his father had passed away and his mom was blind. So he stayed with her. He stayed with her until she, the Prophet passed away, uh, Abu Bakr became the Khalifa, Abu Bakr passed away, Umar became the Khalifa, and then his mom passed away, so he's like, I'm going to go and make Hajj. And Umar al-Khattab had this habit of every time doing the Hajj, he'd be like, is there, who is from the tribe of Qarn and Yemen, and is there a person called Uwais, and he has this like mark on his eye, arm, and he kept looking for him. So this one year, Uwais al-Qarani finally comes, and Umar al-Khattab's like, oh my god, this is the guy, right, this is the one. And so, and he tells him, he's like, you're never leaving, khalas, you're staying with me. And Uwais al-Qarani says something very beautiful, he says, oh, no, you were meant to be Umar, and I was meant to be who I am. And that was his door to Allah. Like, so you could have a secret with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody knows. People look at you, eh, you're not that special. Nobody thinks you're special. But to Allah, you're special. The Prophet ﷺ tells us, like, you know, there's going to be people, they walk into a gathering, nobody notices they came in. They leave a gathering, nobody notices that they left. They pass away, they die. They don't have a lot of people praying over them. But this person, if they were to take an oath upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will grant them. You're like, who are these special people, right? I, I don't know that they're special, you don't know they're special, but they're special to Allah. So we say Allah is wasi', right? That means there's room for us. Don't belittle yourself, don't let shaitan tell you to be like, you're, you're, you're not a halima, or you're not this, you're not that. Find your door to Allah. 
do what you can for the sake of Allah because Allah is wasa, He will encompass you. Learn, this is haram, I won't do it. You know, subhanAllah, the Muslims, you know, when we look, when we go to like Al Hamra, for example, right, and you see how beautiful it is in Granada, right? They say like Islamic art, what they call Islamic art, it developed because the Muslims were like, or the Sunni Muslims were like, we can't do imagery. But then look what came out of it. Right? Like, look at the beauty that came out. So somebody's like, that's a restriction, right? Like, we can't do this. No, no, but look at the beauty that came out of it, right? And so, subhanAllah, like, even in the quote-unquote restrictions, but you can make something beautiful, right? And you do it for the sake of Allah, subhanAllah. So, like, I'll end here very, very quickly. So how do we live with these things of Allah? How do I behave in the world knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, right? That he's al-wasa. Like, one thing is, like, we have to learn our religion, right? Like, learn. Learn what, you know, the things that may, that we're not allowed to do, and then the circle, the vast circle of halal, and then find your way to Allah, right? Do what, do what Allah has created you to do. You are special to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You were put here, like, imagine... Every single Allah created us, like every single one of us individually, like Allah made you, Allah fashioned you, the way you look, everything, like that should make us feel special. You know, you look at whatever people are saying, you know, go get a nose job, go do this, go get Botox, go get fillers, you know, but Allah made me like this. Alhamdulillah, like I'm Allah fashioned, I don't need a plastic surgeon to fashion me. Alhamdulillah, Allah fashioned me, right? And so we have to, subhanAllah, like learn our deen. Second is we have to direct our intentions. Like my intentions for Allah, you make something, you raise the status of something, of a simple act because of your niyyah. This is from the Sa'a of Allah. Like who, like who does that? You know, I teach and my students, um, you know, they, you know, sometimes they get things wrong. And they're just like, but I studied really hard. And I'm like, I, you know what? That's for Allah. I can only give you the grade, the, what, the answers that you put. I'm sorry. Like, this is, I can't, right? But Allah, subhanahu, right? He takes into account your intention. I, I tried so hard. You know what? It's as though you did it because Allah, Allah is so fast, right? So direct your intention to him. Don't limit Allah, right? That's the third thing. Don't limit, once you find yourself, you're limiting Allah, you're feeling negative towards Allah. Ah, okay, Allah is wasa, and I'm saying, really, I'm saying that he's not wasa because I'm limiting him. So catch yourself, okay? Other thing is make space for people. Imam al-Ghazali, you know, he says, if you can't expand for people from your wealth, so you can, you know, help them. He says, expand for them with their character, lighten their burden. You love that Allah makes space for you, make space for other people. That person doesn't seem to be really religious, right? That person who, like, like the man that I told you about, that people gave up on, make space for them. You don't know what their situation is going to be like next month, next year, in 10 years, that they're going to they're gonna shock you, right? Make space for people. And find your place, right? And, you know, don't give up on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And know because of because Allah is al wasa when you give up something for the sake of Allah, He's wasa, He will replace. It's not like I gave this thing up, halas, I gave it up forever. Remember, I said Allah's khazain, Allah's store is like, like, you didn't even know what was in there. And so Allah will replace for you with Allah something that you didn't even imagine. Allah. And finally, Allah. Allah's ways are vast, right? Allah can make a way. You think there's Allah. no way, but Allah can make a way. Allah. 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 Allah.